Hey, I'm super bored right now. Do you want to like solve some Rubik's cubes or something? Okay, where should we meet up? How about we meet on a moon of Jupiter? Maybe Europa? All right, I'll be there in five minutes. Hey, you made it. Have a seat. Okay. So what's the scramble? Okay, let me generate a scramble, and here's the scramble. Okay, this is a scramble. So what method do you use? Oh, uh, I invented it myself. It's really cool. It only has one algorithm. What method do you use? Oh, that's cool. I also invented my own method. It has like 43 quintillion algorithms, but it has a really low move count. Oh, cool. Okay, ready? Set. Go! Yes! I did it! Dude, your method clearly sucks. It took you like hundreds of billions of years. What's wrong with you? Yeah, but I only had to learn one algorithm. Bruh. The Devil's Algorithm is a theoretical algorithm that when applied over and over and over again will eventually give you a solved cube. Such an algorithm is currently not known and would probably be an insane number of moves long. Yo, what's up guys, Blavinati Central here. So, is there really an algorithm that when applied over and over again will solve any Rubik's Cube? Well, theoretically, yes, and it's called the Devil's Algorithm. So why is this called the Devil's Algorithm? Well, basically, it's the opposite of another interesting cubing topic called God's Number. God's Number is the minimum amount of moves required to solve any Rubik's Cube. So God's Number was proven to be about 20 turns in half turn metric. So in um, quarter turn metric, it's like 26 or something. So any Rubik's Cube can be solved in 20 moves. So if that was somehow turned into an insane Rubik's Cube method, you need to memorize the 43 quintillion different scrambles and have an algorithm for each one. But it would probably be the best because you could always solve it in less than 20 moves. So if you had a high TPS, that would be the best method. So if the devil's algorithm was a method, then you'd only have to memorize one algorithm to solve a cube instead of 43 quintillion. But it would be an insane number of moves long. So now that we know what a devil's algorithm is, how long would it be? Well, according to this cool website I found, it's about 34 quintillion moves long, which is insane, but it's already less than the number of possible positions on a Rubik's Cube. This website also says that that calculation was in the quarter turn metric for some reason, so it's probably going to be even lower in half turn metric and slice turn metric. But unfortunately, this is just a theory, and at the time of recording this, no actual algorithm has been found. But this hasn't stopped people online from claiming to have found a devil's algorithm. So one time on April Fool's Day, a popular cube tuber, cube tuber, youtuber, that's what it is. <laughs> a popular youtuber named DG Cubes claimed to have found a devil's algorithm in his video Devil's Algorithm Revealed. So let's take a look at some of these bad devil's algorithms on YouTube. So this is probably one of the most popular videos. As you can see, it has 20 million, almost 20 million views. 100,000 likes. This is the one where he says, oh, you can do it with just two moves. Like he does L prime, U prime the entire time and solves it. But of course he has this whole block solved and then L prime, U prime eventually solves the cube with the corners permuted and the edges in the right spots and stuff. This is the video that started it all by DG cubes five years ago, April Fool's prank. I think the algorithm is just an A perm, but like really weird long version of an A perm. <laughs> Okay, so this guy, this guy is like one of the more convincing guys. Um, um, he says the algorithm is LBDFUR, which is just like turning every single side. So obviously that's not gonna work because that's just a repetitive sequence of moves. And actually the Rubik's Cube has proven to be um, five gen, so you don't need to turn the back face at all to solve a Rubik's Cube ever. And then <laughs> he says, try R prime F, blah, 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 blah than the inverse of that and keep going back and forth like that. Let me know your findings. So yeah, this guy is completely full of it. He does other stuff like R prime, F prime, just like all the sides with the different prime symbols mixed in. 
and yeah, it's just, it's just not how that works. So now we're going to take a quick tour deep into the study of graph theory. So graph theory has nothing to do with like normal XY graphs, right? So graph theory is basically the study of networks of different nodes and how they interact with each other. So now I want you to forget everything you know about a normal graph. This is like no longer a graph, okay? So we're going to be just redefining a graph. So a graph in graph theory is basically a network made out of nodes. These are also sometimes called points or vertices. Um, so let's just draw a couple nodes here, boom, like this. And these vertices are connected by edges, which are also called lines or links. So like this. So this would be a network in graph theory. So now we're going to pick one of the nodes to start at. So let's pick this one. So now the question is, can we visit every single point just once and return back to the start? So let's go here, down here, and the answer is yes. We can visit each point exactly once without repeats and return to where we started. So this is what's called a Hamiltonian circuit, also called a Hamiltonian cycle. You start at a point, and you visit every single other point just once and return back to where you started. Now there's one other thing called a Hamiltonian path. So that's where we start somewhere and then we don't care if we end up where we started, we just care to visit every single point once. So here we've visited every single vertice once and, but we haven't returned back to where we started. And also notice that some edges never get used. It's just unfortunate. So how does this relate to cubing? Well, if we pretend that each of these vertices are a scramble on a Rubik's cube, the question becomes, is there a sequence of moves we can use to visit every single scramble just once and return back to where we started? In other words, is there a Hamiltonian circuit for the three x three? And guess what? A Hamiltonian circuit has been found for both the 2x2 and the 3x3 from someone called Cuber Bruce. Now, these text files are like actually enormous. So it's like algorithms within algorithms within algorithms that make up this huge Hamiltonian circuit throughout the entire 3x3. It's insane. You can check it out. Link in description. You can download it if you want. It's like 200 megabytes. It's like kind of huge, just full of text. I downloaded it on my computer and it like made it lag scrolling through it. It was pretty crazy. So now that we know about graph theory, let's try to figure out some devil's algorithms for other types of puzzles. So first, let's start with the 2x2. Two two. And actually, it's not really a 2x2. Two two. We're going to pretend that this is what's called a restricted 2x2. Two two. So the restricted 2x2 two two can only do 180 degree turns. So only like R2, U2, L2, etc. So with only being allowed to do 180 degree turns, there's only 24 unique scrambles, which is a really low amount. And that means it's possible to find things by brute force, which is fun. So sometime in the year 2013, people were interested in finding the devil's algorithm for restricted two by two, and they found a Hamiltonian path for it. So remember, a Hamiltonian path is something that visits every single scramble and but doesn't have to come back to where it started. So the Hamiltonian path goes something like this. U2, V2, R2, U2, R2, V2, U2, V2, R2, U2, R2, V2, U2, V2, R2, U2, R2, U2, R2, B2, R2, B2, R2. So if you repeat that on any two by two scrambled like this, then you will eventually just solve it. So after a lot more breakthroughs about the restricted two by two, they discovered that the devil's algorithm is seven moves long. And it goes like this, R2, U2, R2, U2, R2, B2, R2. So if you repeat these moves, you will always return to a solved pocket cube, restricted pocket cube. So let's say I just scramble it a little bit like this, hold it in a random orientation, how about here, and then start doing the algorithm. Oh, and it, see, it solves, it's amazing. You just memorize the seven move along algorithm and it eventually solves the cube, awesome. So the restricted two by two only has 24 possible states but a floppy cube has like 192 different possible states. So when they calculated this for the three by three by one, that was before the shape-shifting ones were invented. So I'm just gonna pretend that mine can't shape-shift, okay? <laughs> so they haven't found a um, devil's algorithm for the three by three by one, but they have found a Hamiltonian path, which is of course 192 moves long, the same amount of scrambles there are. So now I'm going to get a random scramble for this, and then I'm just gonna go through it, and hopefully it'll be solved. 
Okay, so I have CS timer open over there and the scramble is B2, R2, F2, R2, B2, R2. So this will be the scramble. And now let's just start doing the Hamiltonian path, or sorry, Hamiltonian circuit. So we'll just start in any position. We're one move away. Do I really have to keep doing the algorithm? Okay, whatever. <laughs> For science. <gasps> yes! Yay! That was actually pretty fast. I think that was only like 60 different moves. So I just got lucky, but it worked. So if I memorized this entire sequence, then I'd be able to solve it with my eyes closed, as long as someone were there to tell me when it was solved, of course. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something about the Devil's Algorithm, pretty cool cubing topic. If you liked this mini documentary style, then make sure to leave a like, and you can subscribe to my channel down below. And that's it, I'll see you guys in the next video.